Uh, but as ever, lots of learning to do. So uh, lots of lots of stuff to keep us occupied and interested. Uh, thank you very much to uh, all our carers, uh, uh, the, the, everybody on the front line. You know, even the the people on the checkout at, at Tesco's and Sainsbury's, and yeah, they're all they're all out there working, risking getting infected and uh to keep us going so many many thanks it is six minutes past eight and we are here this week to talk about itch and 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 unwanted visitors and uh all things to do with skin and 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 and, and skin problems itch is a major major part of veterinary medicine and and itch often often in dogs will often increase in in the spring and that is because the pollen count increases and because fleas come along um so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the three things that make dogs itch the three major categories that of of of, of problems that dogs that get that make them itch and we are going to look at what we can do about those from a holistic perspective what we can do from a from a, a herbal perspective because uh the good people at vermex are very keen on herbs obviously and they're they are the ones who are letting us do have this discussion um just a little notice for you see next next week we're going to be talking about pick up apple poos so that's that's for next week. So, um, welcome to everybody who's here this evening. Everybody's uh, everybody's queuing up. That's great. Haley and Sammy and Carla and Hannah. Uh, so great to see you guys. Thank you for saying. Uh, uh, hey, even before we start, Hannah uh, uh, Haley is saying I have a very Jack, itchy Jack Russell at the moment. There you go, Haley. This is 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 going to be very useful for you okay so i'm going to give you in 20 minutes what it took me about probably like a, a year of dermatology lectures at college okay because what i've done is i've boiled it all down and i call it the one two three of itch in dogs what, what are the what are the things that make dogs itch i've divided them into three categories okay so there are lots of threes in this okay each category more or less is divided into three so there are three categories you can divide everything that all the common reasons for dogs itching into just three categories number one is parasites number two is allergies and number three is infection okay that covers 99% of everything that makes dogs itch and we'll talk about how vets approach this 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 thing but I'm just going to take you through that this, this is because this is really important because if as Haley has you've got an itchy dog and you don't know why the dog is itching you can't treat the dog accurately okay I'll just give you that for now but this is how we as vets think about itch in dogs so that we can treat it more accurately. For example, if you give, give a steroid to any itchy dog, they're likely to get less itchy. Does that get to the heart of the matter? Probably not. OK, so here we go. Three reasons. So the first the first category, parasites, allergy. An infection these are the these three categories the first category parasites so the top parasite is fleas okay fleas are the major reason why dogs itch surprise surprise same with cats okay dogs mainly get fleas from cats i'm afraid to say you may say oh but i don't have a cat but your dog may go out and lie somewhere where a cat has been lying or you may have hedgehogs where the, and the cat dog has some uh, contact with the 
hedgehogs uh, or you may have foxes going through the garden or the foxes sun themselves at the bottom of the garden or the dog goes down there has a little mooch about and picks up a few fleas dogs get fleas from other uh, other dogs or the environment where other dogs and other creatures have been it's a it's a it's a kind of body to body transmission but it can be through sleeping places and lying places even even out of doors in warm weather so the number one reason why dogs itch is fleas uh, and they are a parasite, obviously, and we'll talk about we'll talk about what we can do about that when we've got a, an overview of exactly what we're talking about. The next reason is mange, and the most common type of mange is sarcoptic mange. Now, these creatures are live on the skin and bite and 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 um, and live in the skin and just and feast on being in your skin and they're very very difficult to get rid of using holistic methods you can sometimes but usually you, you're relying on a very good immune system very well fed dog and what have you uh, fleas on the other hand live off the dog and they just take meals on the dog so mange lives on the dog and you have to get rid of it fleas live off the dog and that, that has implications as to how you how you get rid of them. OK, so that that's the, 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 the main sort. There are other things like harvest mites that you get in kind of August, September time. But we're not going to talk about those now because we're concentrating on spring. So parasites on the skin make you itchy. The next major category is allergies. And within allergies, we can divide uh, allergies into three here we go all the threes three major categories first category is indoor allergens indoor allergens are house dust house dust mites uh, molds um, storage mites things like that these are all the things that we the, 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 these um, these things that we find within houses before we were in houses we had much, much less of these things, yeah, when we were living in caves and what have you. But uh, so first one is in indoor allergens, and these will be dogs who itch all year round. So not so much the spring, uh, the spring, the dog who gets more itchy during the spring. The second is outdoor allergens, and these will be grass pollens and tree pollens. OK, you don't get hay fever in the middle of winter. You get it from Easter until September, October time, depending on which pollens you're allergic to. And equal, equally with dogs, they can be allergic to, you know, early pollinators like hawthorn or the much later pollinators like oak and, and, and some of the other trees. Uh, grasses basically take their turns throughout the whole growing season so that they have they they all they, they don't overcrowd each other and so depending on what you're allergic to some unfortunate dogs that i see are allergic to loads of grasses and loads of trees and they are itchy for the entire growing season from easter till october so we've got indoor allergens itchy potentially all year round outdoor allergens itchy mainly during the growing season or for a part of the growing season and then the third group of allergies is food yes food and these again will usually be dogs who are itchy all year round because if you come across a food stuff that you that you're intolerant to during the winter you're going to get itchy yeah many dogs when they eat the wrong food will get itchy skin um, uh, they might get gut problems, but they won't necessarily get gut issues. So uh, those are the three broad groups of allergies, OK, which is the second. We've got parasites, we've got allergies, and then we've got infection. Now, within the infection, we've got three groups. We have got the uh, bacteria, we've got yeast, and we have got fungi, bacteria, yeast and fungi. But the thing is about infection is that if your skin is healthy, 
and doesn't have any parasites and doesn't have any allergies, then you're very unlikely to get the third group, which is the infections. The reason that you get infections is when the skin is devitalized. Now, in, in, in young children, if their nappies are left on too long, you get nappy rash. Okay, nothing to do with parasites, nothing to do with allergies, but the skin is slightly devitalized and you can get a secondary infection. Okay, um, so the infection in dogs is the most common one is called staphylococcal dermatitis. And these are the classic rings that you see on skin. Uh, some people will say that staphylococcal dermatitis looks more like ringworm than ringworm. This is classically, you get these little kind of little uh, collarettes, they call them little round areas of scurf and they're itchy, can be red. There can be some white heads around and things like this. And they, uh, they indicate that you've got a staphylococcal dermatitis and that needs to be addressed um, in order to as, as part of, of, of addressing the allergy, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. So we've got bacterial infection, we've got yeast infection, and these are the, the, uh, the ears or the feet that, or the, sometimes the whole body of the dog or, uh, uh, or cat that smells of um, uh, old socks, or as somebody said yesterday, smells of Doritos. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a cheesy, musky sort of um, yeasty sort of smell. Okay, they are. They, they this is the 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 uh, the yeast infection in in dogs and cats. It's called malassezia yeast, and it's got this classic kind of musky sort of smell. The third group is the fungi, which are which will mainly present as uh, ringworm. So we've got the uh, the round collarettes, leopard spots of staphylococci. We've got the the grayish, smelly, itchy, itchy ears, which smell of uh, old socks. That's the malassezia, and we've got ringworm, which is kind of kind of dull grey patches that don't really look like much, but you lose hair from a patch. So that's how. We think about that's how when when you walk into the vet with an itchy dog, that's how they think about that's that's what that's the that's the drop down menu that that that, that happens in their in their brain, and they go through that. So what will often happen is that they will look. For, so dog is dog is it's spring. Dog's itchy. The first thing that they will do is they'll look for fleas. If they find fleas, they'll give you some. Some, some 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 flea treatment okay because there's no point in treating for allergies or taking blood tests for allergies if it's just simply a flea problem often they will not they will give you a flea treatment even if they don't find fleas because some dogs are actually allergic to fleas and flea dirt and so there may be just one flea on the dog every other day or something like that, just very infrequently. And that manifests itself as, uh, as, uh, as, as an itch, a continual itch. OK, very few fleas, but you've got you've got continual itch because your, um, you know, your, 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 uh, very allergic to minute parts of of the flea itself so the vet will say right can't find fleas we'll treat for fleas or we can find fleas and we'll treat for fleas and there's certain logic in that um holistic the holistic approach to that would be that if you've got a mild dose of fleas or if your dog is not too uh sensitive to fleas, then I would suggest that if you're really aggressive by using um, natural natural products, then you might get away with it. However, with fleas, the key is prevention. Okay, and the prevention from fleas would be uh, I like to use a herbal uh, a herbal product in the uh, in the food and 
our friends uh, here we go this backwards <laughs> i'm having to do it in mirror writing right so our friends at vermex have just produced a, a a blend of herbs which when you put it into the food and feed on a continual basis makes the dog less attractive to fleas we've been trialing it over the winter and we and and, and they were going to be uh getting it out uh, a few weeks ago in time for Easter period, but COVID got in the way. So uh, hold fire, this is a really nice product to use. So you're putting elements in the diet to make the dog less attractive to fleas. Happy days. You can also use brewer's yeast, garlic, uh, and, and, uh, and things like that to um to make the dog less attractive to fleas as well so that's working on the inside working on the outside there are two major um sprays that we use i've got one here which is called dermadog insect defense spray and that's uh that's really good it's basically um uh, rose geranium and lemongrass and cedar wood that's a combination there it's only a small pot so you know if you've got a large dog or if you've got numerous large dogs you might go for the second option which is called cedar side let me write it for you these are sprays uh cedar side cedar side uh there we go let's pop that up so the the, the the next spray to make the dog less attracted to fleas is called cedar side if you've actually got fleas you might have missed the boat and so bringing in herbs or bringing in a spray you might have missed the boat and you may you may have to revert to a pharmaceutical unfortunately the trick with fleas is not to let them get too much of a hold on on the dog and on your house. Because remember, they eat on the dog. They live and live in the house. So for every flea that you find on the dog, you'll find 20, 30, 40 in the environment where they breed and the larvae grow up and what have you. So to minimize the use of pharmaceuticals, we use we use herbal products on and in the dog um, uh, that's really important if the fleas take hold and you can't you really just can't get rid of them using herbal methods and, and by dosing the dog then you've got to spray the house there are products like acclaim which is a big big tall tin of of uh of spray that you use and you have to do the house and the dog and the cat at the same time. That's really the only way around it. I hate using pharmaceuticals when I don't need to, and I don't like using them on a routine basis. That is for sure. However, if it's if the whole house is infested, or even just downstairs is infested with fleas, it's a nightmare scenario. It drives everybody absolutely crazy. And if you're locked in in COVID and you've got loads of fleas, that is just a recipe for disaster. So, do the prevention. If you can't do the prevention, or if the prevention's too late or is not enough, uh, then hit them hard and 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 be be rigorous. If you do hit them hard, it can take two three months, two or three repeats of treatment. Uh, with treating the dog and the cat and or the cat um, before you that you will get rid of them if they've got a real hold on the house then you will need a, 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 to to have some really really strong repetition there you have been warned okay you don't don't think that just because you've done the dog you've done the cat you've done the house the next morning you'll wake up and it'll all be hunky-dory uh -uh. it can take take a while the the and and, and the, the bigger the infestation of the house the longer it's going to take so mange uh is pretty much a vet job however uh homeopathically we use a combination of sulfur 30c and uh, uh and arsenicum 30c i've seen that used for example when in foxes when you can't get near them these are feral foxes who are really mangy we use a we put it in the water or onto a little bit of food or something and you're dosing 
your dose for um, in the morning with the sulfur in the afternoon, in the evening with the arsenicum. Then you go sulfur, arsenicum, sulfur, arsenicum. And I have seen that help with um, with fox mange uh, on foxes or on animals that you can't get hold of dealt with some some uh, stray dogs in greece for example and we were able to help those because we couldn't get near them yeah the the the, 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 the owner the, the rescue couldn't get anywhere near them so those those can be quite useful so those are, those are our parasites and those are some uh, contingencies there uh if y your dog is absolutely and utterly flea free and house is flea free and what have you and your dog is itching all of a sudden then you're you are likely to be in allergy territory and if the allergies cause the dog to damage their skin then you may get secondary infection remember this, our, our third group is the infections which are secondary to the, the skin being unhappy for another reason so let's let's look at in detail at our uh, indoor outdoor and food issues the thing about indoor and outdoor allergens and you're thinking well how do i know whether my dog is allergic to indoor stuff or outdoor stuff and the answer is you can take a blood test from the dog very easily send it off to the lab and within a week or 10 days you can know whether your dog is allergic to um pollens tree pollens grass pollens and what have you which means sometimes you'll be able to say right okay we've got a cherry but dog is allergic to cherry trees nothing else let's just get rid of the cherry tree in the garden and that may help okay it rarely does because if they're that sensitive then there may be a cherry tree four doors down and they are sensitive to that just as um if you stay indoors a lot with hay fever you you still do get hay fever even though the pollen count is is very low indoors okay so um the blood test can help with management of of the dog you can just say if the dog is very oak allergic you can just say right let's not go to the oak forest as we normally do for the two months while the the oak are pollinating okay so little things like that um if the blood test shows your dog to be house dust allergic or to or, or mold because all houses every all houses have mold in them it's just it's just a function of being indoors um then you can uh hoovering like mad can help a tiny bit but it doesn't make a massive massive change to to dogs who've got a, a significant uh, uh, infection. Um, keeping the dog away from, from carpets sometimes is useful in that uh, if you normally let the dog uh, roam the house, you may find just keeping the dog in the, in, in the garden and in the kitchen, if you're able to, might help because those the, the kitchen is, is a wipeable surface. And so the, the, the amount of... Uh, House dust and house dust mites, for example, will be very low there. And in the garden, there is none. No house dust and house dust mites. Some dogs who've got house dust or house dust mite intolerances uh, do well if they don't sleep in the bedroom. OK, you you may be shocked or you may be going oh, feeling really guilty. But most I reckon and I ask everybody, most dogs live sleep either in the bedroom or in the bed yeah i don't care it doesn't matter however if your dog is really really house dust because let's face it house dust, what is house dust house dust is dust from your skin that just that percolates around the house and then settles on your mantelpiece and and things like that and there are there are mites which eat those um the the other common mite in the house that dogs can be allergic to is storage mites and these classically affect the dogs who are who are fed by on kibble now what people classically do is they have a bucket and they they pour the kibble kibble is the the, the brown biscuits that we feed our dogs on um they they feed them on on uh those let me get rid of that because it's a distraction uh good um and unless you assiduously 
clean out your bucket but every time you refill it, then that is a really wonderful way to grow storage mites. Storage mites uh, eat farinaceous material, uh, wheat and barley and, 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 and the cereals and things like that. And they absolutely love kibble because they are high cereal foods, which I don't really like, but, but are very common, commonly fed. OK, so this would be a plug for me for thinking about feeding a, a fresh or a raw food because you immediately eliminate the possibility of exposure to those dust mites. OK. Um, the, and the reason I mentioned food there is because with uh, uh, indoor allergens and outdoor allergens, there's not a lot you can do about those. However, with, with with food, you can manipulate food. So if your dog is food into, is, is intolerant to chicken, for example, you stop giving chicken, lo and behold, dog stops itching. Or maybe they're chicken and beef intolerant, in which case you stop feeding chicken, they still itch. You stop feeding beef, they still itch, itch because they're eating chicken. You, if you stop feeding chicken and beef, Bob's your uncle dog stops itching okay that's a really common scenario and that 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 will be um will have a significant effect in probably 40 percent of itchy dogs is getting the diet right um th these sometimes are the dogs who itch for no good reason you know for a few days twice a month that is that when i hear that i think aha what is the dog coming across? What is the dog eating twice, once or twice a month? That might be setting them off. Okay, and um, that's that. That's a classic story there. So that's our that our allergies. If you if your dog is under about four years old and your your vet takes a blood test and says, oh look, they're allergic to these pollens and this house dust, it is possible for the vet to 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 ask the lab to create a vaccine to those things that the dog is allergic to which very subtly overwhelms the, the 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 system such that it reduces the itchiness to those uh those those um those allergens the outdoor and the indoor allergens it's about 45 percent effective so 45 percent of dogs will have some benefit from that after the age of four years old they get much less benefit okay so if if you've if you've got a dog who's two years old or so and they're itching and you don't not sure why these are the this is the um the the the, the logical train that we use and there may be some some light at the end of the tunnel with the uh with the injection with the it's called Hi, let me write it for you. Hyposensitization, because that's a bit of a mouthful. Hyposensitization, vaccination. If you if you don't like vaccination, and I don't like vaccination, don't be as scared of this because it's 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 not a it's not a vaccine vaccine. It's a uh, that should roll around there we go um i've never seen really major uh, adverse reactions to these these things they are made specifically for the animal uh and they, they don't have a, a lot of nasties in them so never seen major major issues against that okay so there you go so that's our parasites a little chat about parasites there's a little chat about allergies um and if you've got either of those two things and the dog is damaging their skin, you can get this secondary infection. OK, and we've talked about the leopard spots with staphylococcus infection. We've talked about smelly socks with uh, the, 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 the yeast infection, especially in the feet or in the ears uh, or, uh, uh, or the fungus, the, 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 um, the ringworm type scenario. OK, and your vet will be able to get on top of those quite easily. Uh, if you go to the vet and they just give you something to get rid of the itch, then 
with and, and, and the, re, the itch returns and then returns again, I think that the, the thing to do would be to ask for a diagnosis. That really would be uh, the way to do it, um, to, 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 to ask to go a little bit further such that you can work out. I always say that it's a bit like taking your... No, it's like it's like having a a, a a car with a funny noise, uh, and you take it to the garage, and they just give it a whack on the bonnet without opening the bonnet, and the the the, the funny noise disappears for a couple of weeks, but then the funny noise comes back, and you take it back to the garage, and they give it a whack. And it, and, it, and, it, and it helps for a while, but then the itch comes back. If you're in that kind of situation with an itchy dog, then just say, listen, um, please can we uh, go a little bit further with the diagnostics to see whether we've got allergies, to see whether we've got uh, problems with, with parasites or maybe problems with infection, okay? This is a, 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 a very useful way to do it, just treating the itch. Even if you use, you know, herbs, and I'm big fan of herbs even if you just you're using herbs to treat the itch and every time you stop using the herbs the itch comes back then that's not so ideal not so ideal let's take our hyposensitization vaccination out of the way there okay so uh let me have a look so there's a little a little resume okay we're at half an hour but there's i think really there's still lots to lots to talk about i better plug my machine in by the way don't want it failing failing on us um <laughs> caroline hearn always always um <laughs> always um a smile on her face says anyone else started actually great uh and uh, here's Carla saying, Bessie would leave home if she wasn't allowed to sleep in the bed. <laughs> ah, why am I not surprised, Carla? Um, uh, Jan Huare, uh, happy to be here from France. Uh, here we go. Here he is. Um, great. Jan, lovely to see you. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, any Any questions, guys? Any questions? Any? Let's have a look. Uh, I know not a lot, a lot of chat, guys. Are you actually paying attention to what I'm saying? I sincerely hope so. Oh yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, oops. Oh, almost lost my. Almost lost my. Hang on. That's the camera. That's the it's just come off my super duper lovely camera there you go see what a difference it makes yeah it takes 10 years off me this this camera this, that's why i love it um okay so uh, let's just do a question here from claire oaks quite a big one so i'll read it for you claire oaks says i have a GSD who has allergies to dust and storage mites. He has no food intolerance, but just to be safe, I keep him off chicken and beef. Good. That's really, really wise, Claire. Well done. Uh, I've checked with my raw food supplier. He's fit raw fed. That's good. So the dust, dust mite intolerances, they're out the window. Good. To check that they wash down the plant equipment in between. Yeah, that's good. He's on two Apoquel a day, which I can't get him off. Yep, that's not unusual. Unfortunate, but not unusual. Since January, he started itching again, but this time it's different. His fur is thinning on the right-hand side of his rib cage. I put him on apple cider vinegar and use Dermactin shampoo bar once a week, and I spray him with apple cider vinegar before I dry him. He's also on seven days of sulfur 30C. He's not very itchy now, but when his fur is thinning, he's still got lots of dry skin he's had a real smell about him as well which is a lot better okay so let's just take that bit by bit so he's got allergies to dust and storage mites i would be looking at uh some herbs there and i'll go through a few herbs with you just now but also homeopathics can be very useful there what i often do is i'll make up a a, a homeopathic uh of dust and storage mites and give that and that can be very useful um 
you said that he smelt he he was smelling of how did you describe it? he had really uh, uh he had a real smell about him and that is your yeast and it looks like you you're getting on top of that with the damactin and with apple cider vinegar so that's good yeast hates apple cider vinegar don't put neat apple cider vinegar down yeasty ears though because it can sting like crazy um uh, i would dilute it to about a quarter apple cider vinegar three quarters water before doing that um uh, to try and uh, make the ears more acidic um so my thoughts there would be uh, talk to one of you your a homeopathic vet if you look on the bahvs dot com website you'll find a homeopathic vet next to you near you i'm not sure where you are claire um keep him on the apoquel because if you drop the apoquel he's going to be a, an itching disaster okay so uh, unfortunately keep him on the apoquel um the first thing on the right hand side of his ribcage well he's probably scratching it out can't say for sure because i don't know him but that's likely there um you have got a diagnosis so really if you've gone as far as you can on the apoquel i think homeopathics and herbs are the way to go for you claire logically yeah because you, you've gone as far as you can with the with the with the uh, conventional treatment i've just made some notes on on some herbs that i use in the practice which are anti itch and i'm just going to go through uh, a few uh um categories that i use them is that, that, that i use so if you've got an just a small area that is temporarily a bit itchy you can use a, a topical local um anti-itch herbs on the skin itself and that the the list that i use within the practice uh and I'll, I'll i'll read it out quite slowly is aloe vera you can either get it from the plant or you can buy it uh, calendula, uh, which is marigold. Uh, I use witch hazel. Yeah, Optrex actually is witch hazel, believe it or not. But you can buy you can buy tincture of witch hazel from the chemist as well. Uh, St John's wort can be useful as a as a as a topical. You put it on, you'd, you'd macerate it and make a paste, or you'd make a, a very strong tea, uh, a, a, or you'd use kind of the dregs of your your um, chamomile, which is the next one on the list. Um, chickweed, Stellaria media, is a very calming, topical preparation that we can use. And comfrey, which is, there's loads of it outside, he says, pointing to the outside window. Lots of comfrey around at the moment, so you can use that. That's very, very calming, uh, otherwise known as knit bone. If you've got a broken bone, in the old days, they used to use that too to help but it's also very calming for the skin the other group that i want to just share with you are the emollient herbs which are kind of the moisturizing and they're, they're, they're anti-drying they're nourishing and feeding and you can use these topically yeah you, you, you can use them you make a make a mash or a tea and you can put them onto a localized area obviously if your entire dog is itching like crazy you can't dunk the whole dog in a herbal bath but for localized areas or hot spots these are really wonderful uh, i'll just read that through again so aloe calendula uh witch hazel st john's wort chamomile chickweed and comfrey okay the emollient herbs these 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 kind of moisturizing herbs are marshmallow bladder rack you know the, the 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 seaweed that you get on the beach with the little little poppy bits to it that you can use that as a wonderful uh, uh, uh nutritive um cooling calming uh, topical application uh licorice difficult to get hold of uh in, in in the right format um unlike marshmallow you can buy marshmallow um 
uh, as a dried herb, and you just you'll just soak it, and then you can you can apply that or make a tea and apply the dregs of the tea uh, onto the skin. Uh, flaxseed, you can make a mash out of that, just pouring hot water onto that, letting it cool. Uh, you can even put it in the all of these. You can put in the fridge and then apply to skin to cool the skin. It's really really fantastic. And fenugreek, fenugreek, you can make a tea and use the, the dregs, the mash, the the the, the uh, yeah the dregs. Right, right, that, that kind of says it all really to apply as a as in a, in a in in an application. So um, those are some 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 really lovely herbs that we can use locally there are herbs that we can use by mouth which can have a general um effect on on helping to nourish to calm to have an anti anti itch effect on the skin but equally just as using apoquel when you don't know why the dog is itching i think using herbs to treat an itch when you don't know why the dog is itching is 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 bad it's kind of it's 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 uh it's not great medicine the best thing to do is find out why the dog is itchy and then address the itch hopefully with herbs and homeopathics and things like this but otherwise um to to just use anti-itch treatment without knowing what's that's i've got a bit of a bit of a beat in my bonnet about that okay here we go coming back on to uh to say hello to everybody there we're way over time i do apologize guys um there you go um as it says on the crawler just here this is called a crawler by the way I, that's something i found out um this is just just to say that we will be back next week and we're going to be talking about pick up a poos. And this is where I pick up my pen uh, and how to improve digestion. I think loads and loads and loads of dogs and cats are running around out there with pasty, sloppy poos that are normal for them. And the owners think, well, that's just the way it is. And you're not doing your 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 dog, your dog's longevity, your dog's health the dog's vitality any favors if you're doing that and so next week at five past eight on thursday we're going to go through all of that stuff and we're going to look at uh the gut and herbs from that perspective um guys i'm going to say a very big thank you to everybody and um uh, if you uh, if you would like to find out a little bit more on the subject, if you go to the Vermex website, which you probably are now in order to see this, if you just uh, so if you go to the website as opposed to the Facebook page and you just sign up for the newsletter, the good people of Vermex will send you lots more information uh, about this subject that we've been putting together over the last couple of days. There you go. That's us. I'm off for my dinner now, um, nearly nine o'clock. So I think I deserve it. Uh, I'm going to say a very, uh, a very good night to you. Keep safe. Keep well. Keep sane. Uh, keep healthy. Look after those dogs. They need you. That's the reason that you have got to stay sane and safe and well. Uh, take care. Thanks for thanks for being with us this evening.